Boom! Hello, my name is Hiko Simon. Um, this is kind of a special recorded version of After Party for uh, you could think of it as Tokyo tonight. Uh, as you know, every week I've been getting into playing, um, getting back into DJing. I've always used mobile apps for making music, and lately I've gotten back into making music, um, well, mixing music with my favorite sort of drum and bass tracks and other popular tracks. And I've been using an application called uh, DJ Pro by Algorithm, which is avail it's available on Android. Mac, uh, PC, and iOS, and I use it on iOS, I use it on iPad and iPhone, particularly on my iPhone, that's where all my music is, and my music won't sync with my iPad, so that's why I've been using this tiny interface, and I've gone far enough and comfortable enough, and I'm having enough fun with this, that I thought, well, okay, now I'm proficient with the software in the phone, I might as well get a dedicated hardware controller, which will actually let me do more with this. Um, Quick story, when I was a DJ, I learned to DJ the old-fashioned style on analog uh, Technics SL1200s, the old uh, big turntables, playing actual records, not, um, you know, um, not, not coded vinyl. And um, yeah, yeah, I, I, I learned that way. And when everything went to CDJs, I sort of kept up with that. But when everything went to PC and buying totally new equipment, I was also just, my life got busy and I never learned how to really do that. And I always thought, if it ever gets, you know, if the technology advances to a point that it's easy to come back, I'll do that. So that time that I dropped out of DJ uh, is the time that really um, software applications like Serato and Pioneer DJ controllers kind of became the standard. And because of the sort of stranglehold that apps like Tractor and Serato and so on and those are um, sort of more standardized sort of Pioneer format controllers have been around, um, they've sort of become the norm. They've become the SL1200s that you have to get if you want to DJ. And it still is true if you want to DJ in clubs. However, this DJ Pro app, this has been around forever on um, iOS, and it's always been kind of a fun app, and I've installed it and played with it and put it away. But it's become really, really interesting just in the last uh, six months. Two things in particular. One, it's introduced um, really powerful AI technology, which I know sounds like a gimmick, but it's really cool. Other than the fact that it like, uh, can detect, like it can actually detect the beat bars in music, which is essential for, for beat matching and for mixing. Um, and the sync functionality and everything is great. It's also figured out how to really cleanly extract stems, which are just, for example, even where normally if I want to like remix a track, I need to get the a cappella track, just the vocal only track, and something else to mix it. This will take a track that isn't separated, and AI will actually intelligently extract the music, the uh, vocals, and the drums, and it basically gives you the stems of any music that you have just about. It does it very well. It works with most music, but you can completely remix and mash up any track and it is super good at helping you beat match efficiently and you can do it all on your phone i've been doing mashups on my phone on the train so this is super fun and i was persuaded i wanted to go to the next level the thing is this software is not made to work explicitly with all these standard controllers of pioneer and so on um, they have partnered with this company reloop to make this controller um, and there's only a few controllers that are compatible with the software and this is a problem if you love the software and you go to a club the controllers there won't work very well by default with it. It's one of the things when I see reviews of algorithm, established DJs love the software, but they don't want to use it because it won't work with the controllers that they have to use when they go and play events. Me, I don't care. I'm here. I never learned to use the Pioneer controllers. I'm learning from scratch now, and I'm doing this mainly to stream online with you folks. And I love the software. So for me, it makes total sense. I'll go and get a controller that's made to work with the software. I don't give a crap what the industry standard is. Um, and there are very, very few options, but one of the options is sort of like there are super expensive options, like thousands of dollars, and there's a super cheap option called the Reloop Buddy. I mean, it sounds like it's, it's pitched as a sort of a, a beginner to intermediate DJ oriented sort of a device. But what I like is um, it has dedicated like uh, you don't have to uh, map buttons to make them work with the software. It's designed to work with the software that I've been using. So I wanted to go get this thing and I was umming and eyeing about getting it. When I finally, I thought I'd... I'd See if I enjoy this. If I sustain it for three months, I'll go and buy the deck. However, um, I was enjoying it so much, I went to a DJ shop to go check it out. One week after, um, Algorithm announced that they'd done a deal with Apple Music, uh, that the entire Apple Music library is now compatible with um, DJ Pro. And I know that didn't really set the world on fire in America where everybody uses Spotify and so on, but in Japan, Spotify sucks. They never had an interest in getting a good Japanese music library. So a lot of Japanese people, the majority of whom have iPhones, listen to their Japanese music on iTunes and their, their massive libraries are all on iTunes. So what I discovered when I went to uh, the old uh, DJ equipment shop in Shibuya where I got my Technics when I arrived in Japan, 
uh, they had the, the buddy on display, but it was sold out. And when I asked, oh, well, can I order one? They said, no, they're sold out everywhere. And the manufacturers sold out. And it all happened in one week after the Apple Music announcement. And sure enough, I checked every supplier in Japan from Hokkaido to you know, Kyushu. I checked every shop in Japan. And not only are they all sold out and there's no stock left anywhere, but they won't even guarantee, they won't even order with the maker because even the maker is out of supply because they all got, they probably didn't make enough uh, to anticipate the Apple Music announcement. So this is basically like dot printing money for, for this Reloop company at the moment. Uh, but um, yeah, so I sort of, geez, I should have moved a week earlier and I could have gotten one of these if I hadn't been so conservative, I thought. But I, uh, I, I went checking online, and what if I got it from overseas? And I found that I could actually get one of these still. There were shops that stocked them, online stores that stocked it still in Italy. And uh, I had a friend who I was able to arrange to have the, to purchase a device in Italian, send it to Italy and have that person ship it to me. Um, and it arrived today. So you cannot buy this in Japan right now. And you might not be able to buy it probably until July at this rate. Um, there are online demos of it working, but not many. So um, yeah, I thought it'd be fun to do kind of an unboxing. I don't normally do this, but you've been watching me do it and I'm going to be learning to use this. So here it is, the Reloop Buddy. Is that a mirror format? Maybe that is mirror format. I don't know. Maybe it's just for me for recording purposes. Uh, but anyway, um, just arrived. Um, nice box. There's no assembly or anything involved, but I thought it'd be fun to open this up. I am opening this up for the first time with you. So let's open it up and plug it in. I'm going to probably get to just uh, figuring this out. As you can see, you can actually not only works with uh, Apple Music, works with Beatport, which is actually great for drum and bass music that I play, although I'm not signed up. BeatSource, SoundCloud, Tidal. I'm on SoundCloud, by the way. I actually uploaded all my mashups up there the other day. Most of them got copyright claimed, um, but I'm there. So um, as well as Apple Music. So you can use a lot of uh, sort of music sources. And this should just plug into my iPhone and give me a whole world of new control and tricks and things I can do to mix better. So let's open it up and take a look. Um, just thinking this will probably have a European power supply, which may be a problem. Um, so yeah, you can see the overhead camera has got this. Um, so what have we got? We've got a manual, which uh, thank heavens has English. I actually saw the manual online. Um, it's like two pages long <laughs> and it looks like you basically just plug it in. So I'm going to put that aside. We've got RCA cables. This has an RCA connector, which was a problem because I've been using 3.5 millimeter connectors, which meant that I knew I needed to get a converter. So I actually purchased this on Amazon and it just arrived today. So I knew that I'd have this so I could convert the RCA into uh, the connector I use to connect this to the computer. Um, what else have we got here? We have a uh, USB, kind of wonky USB to USB. So this is uh, for plugging into a power supply, I believe. So let's take that out. And uh, there is the controller, safe and sound in the box, super light. I think it's less than a kilogram actually, so it feels honestly like a toy. Uh, I did see this in the shop. So let's get this box aside. Ooh. And let's get this out of the plastic and see what we've got here. Oh, that is shiny. There's no like plastic protecting that or anything. So that is already ready to go. It does look shiny. It does look a little bit, I admit, like a toy. Um, the actual DJ nightclub things are bigger, heavier, they've got a bigger circle on it. This is kind of uh, basic. But um, yeah, it is light, it is plastic, it's got two channels. I always had a three channel uh, setup where I had like a mic channel uh, on my analog mixer, which I've got in another room. But this, um, no fancy USB connectors or anything, you can see there's an R it's got an RCA output, which is why you need that converter, as well as headphones, which is what you plug in to listen to what you're mixing. And you can uh, set up how much you want to mix, as well as the output volume with manual knobs, which I appreciate that control. Um, in terms of what it's got on the device, it's got a nice little slot here where I can, uh, if I take my iPhone out of the case, which I guess I should do. This is made sort of for iPads and tablets, so I can mount them here. And that fits nicely. So yeah, that's actually pretty cool. I can put that so I can actually queue up my music and search on the device and control it from here. Um, these three buttons are what sold it for me. These three buttons are the um, AI controls. In fact, you know what, rather than do that, I have a standing table. So I'm going to zoom in this way. <laughs> I'm going to elevate the table. Um, these are the uh, vocals, music, and drums. And I can just twist these knobs um, to uh, make that mix in and out. Um, so that is pretty cool. This is a navigation uh, dial. So that's pretty cool. I've got to learn how to use that. These are the effects controls. So I can put in effects, which again, uh, I'd have to click through. I haven't been using these at all. 
but these are there and ready to go and trigger and use when I'm doing live. So that's going to let me do things that I'm not doing right now. Uh, it's got these buttons, which I can do to queue up, for example, or specifically queues, for example, if I've set up parts in the track that I want it to start, if I want to mash something up, it makes it much easier, um, as well as things like samples and so on. In fact, you've got these different modes. You can set it up to uh, queue, loop, uh, you can use it to trigger effects and so on. So again, just something tangible, and I don't have to click through menus on the phone to do it. These pads I can use for navigating just like a regular record. They simulate I can move back and forth to navigate uh, where to start on the track rather than having to go back and forth like I've been doing. And you can scratch and do stuff like that if you want to do that. Although honestly it does feel a bit tinny doing this. I have real vinyl and I can scratch on real vinyl. But there again, I mean it's something fun to do. Um, these are cool. These set up loops where you can uh, use this to control how long you want the loop to be, whether you want it to be a couple of bars playing, a, you know, a section of music over and over, if you want to dial it in so it like escalates into a riser, like da -da -da. So, um, and yeah, and then you've got the tempo controls, which uh, it's kind of funny. Back in my day, up was increasing tempo and down was decreasing tempo, but lately controllers have all been inverted, um, which, which this is as well. That seems to be the standard set by Pioneer. So, um, yeah, anyway, uh, let's uh, plug it in. Let's figure out how to plug it in. And see how it works. Uh, I've got to put this PC. I've got to plug this in for power. It's kind of a cool looking purple USB. Pokemon. Got to catch them all. Okay, this is a temporary solution, but it now appears to be at least powered on. That is good. Okay, let's plug in the audio. So I've got my RCA to a 3.5 millimeter adapter here. Let's plug this in. I also need to plug in my sound card, so this will go into the computer. Mm. Okay, let's try that. Let's just queue up on the next side something. So I've got a comparison. Let's just put that in. You should be able to hear me do this. So let's uh, let's see if the button works and if the music comes out. Let's figure out how this works. Let's go. I'm going to figure this out, and um, yeah, that is the Reload Buddy. And this is cool. This is going to let me do things I can't do, just doing it off the phone. So uh, I'm going to have a lot of fun with this. And uh, yes, yeah, this is cool. You cannot get this in Japan right now. I can't get this anywhere. So uh, I'm having fun. I'm, I'm going to look forward to seeing what I can do with this to enhance what I've been doing already. So uh, yeah, thanks for watching, and boom, peace.